All right, this video is going to be on the key of David, what it is and who receives it. It is a three-day sexual fast going into the Sabbath day. This is how the priests can minister to the Lord. They can do sacrifices on the Sabbath day. This is how Yeshua and his disciples were plucking ears of corn and doing things on the Sabbath day and not held guiltless. This is how so many servants, especially people in our group, are going out and doing the Father's work on the Sabbath day, preaching the gospel, rebuking sin, doing the things that usually would be they would be held accountable for doing these things, but because they're diligent to our Father's instructions, but abstaining from sex for three days leading into the Sabbath, they can do the work of our Father. And this is something that is key to understanding who the 144,000 are, why they are called virgins. They're not 144,000 Jewish boys running around. They hold the key of David. They, they, they honor the Father's word more than sex in these days. And yeah, well, let's just get into the scripture so you can fully understand it. And I'll cover every little detail of it. Um, Matthew 19, it says, But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this saying, save they whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were born uh, from their mother's womb, and there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And there be some are be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. <clears throat> he that is able to receive it, let him receive it. So now let's go to Revelation 3, where it speaks of the key of David. It says, Unto the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, Philadelphia is the good one, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, because because thou hast kept the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. The hour of temptation, that's the tribulation coming soon, um, which shall come upon all the world to try them and, uh, that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast. What fast? It's the three-day sexual fast. Is he literally calling the key of David a fast? This is a three-day sexual fast for the priest, for the, the workers, the servants of God, Jacob, my servant, the ones going to go out and do this work on the Sabbath day without profaning it. So if you're out there, you're out there in the streets, you're witnessing to people and you are dying of thirst, say you live in Arizona or, or Vegas or somewhere like that, you can actually go into a store Buy a drink without profaning the, the Sabbath day because you're doing the work of our Father. These next verses coming up, you'll see exactly. Yeshua was not held blameless. David and his, his men were not held blameless. Joshua was not held blameless because of this, this diligence to our Father's word. It says, which thou hast, and uh, no man can take thy crown. What crown? The kings and the queens receive crowns because they're a part of their, their God's servants, the 144,000 says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no, no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. So it says... Hold that fast because it is a three-day sexual fast leading into the Sabbath. David and his men ate of the showbread, which was unlawful for them to do. The priests profaned the Sabbath and were held blameless. So let's see what happens with Yeshua and the Pharisees. This is Matthew 12. At, <clears throat> at that time, Yeshua went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered and began to pluck ears of corn and to eat. But the Pharisees saw it. And they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day. But he said unto them, Have ye not read what David did when he was a hungered? And they that were with him, when he entered into the house of God and did eat the showbread, 
which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for him or them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. <laughs> but if thou had known what this meant or meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. He would have... Uh, he would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. So he's literally quoting Hosea 6.6 6 here. I have mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. So let's see what uh, David did in 1 Samuel 21. Now, therefore, what is under thine hand? Give me five loaves of bread in mine hand, or what there is present. And the priest answered David and said, There is no common bread under mine hand. Uh, but there is hallowed bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of a truth, women have, n have been kept from us about these three days. That's the key of David. Right there. Um, not a lot of people read this and tie it to it. But praise God for some of my brothers and sisters like Mark and, and Andrew and everyone. Man, this was was huge. It's huge. And when you keep, when you hold this key of David, man, through your diligence to our Father's instructions to, and to do His work, it is more than just a three day sexual fast. It opens up the scriptures. It opens up your eyes because of your your perseverance. How you can put off something as much as like sexual sex. You know, if you can follow our Father over your lusts, then He's going to open up the scriptures in amazing ways. It's such a beautiful thing. Um, continuing, it says, since I came out and the vessels of the young men are holy and the bread is in a manner common, yea, though it were sanctified this day in the vessel. So abstaining from extracurricular activities three days is key for David and these men to have broken a commandment on the Sabbath day by eating the temple showbread and not to be accountable unto death. So let's go to Numbers 28. And on the Sabbath day... Two lambs of the first year without spot and two tenths deal of flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering every Sabbath besides the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So how do the priests do this? How do they slaughter something on a Sabbath day when they're not supposed to do any of those things? It's because they have the key of David. So Exodus 19 is... is just another one, a reiteration. It says, Moses was commanded to tell the Israelites at the foot of Mount Sinai to wash their clothes and keep their vessels holy for three days. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people. And they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. It's key of David. This is a sanctification process. Now let's go to Jericho and Joshua. It says, And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day. There's, okay. <laughs> if you don't know that the day starts in the morning at dawn, watch the video I did on the day dawning. It's key to not polluting the Sabbath day. Um, all throughout the scriptures, it talks about a polluted sab Sabbath. And this is a Chaldean tradition uh, carried over from Babylon um, at the time that the, the southern kingdom came back from Babylon. Um, it's key. It's very, very vital. Um, and it's considered the day dawning of your heart. This is a more sure thing of prophecy. Peter says this. It says, And encompassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time, when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the, for the Lord hath given you the city. This is so prophetic. Every bit of the book of Joshua is prophetic. But how did he do battle on the Sabbath day? He kept the key of David. They were kings. He was with priests. They were doing the same thing. Um, that's pretty much everything I just said. So 2 Samuel 11. And David said unto, said unto Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah, Uriah departed out of the king's house. And there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house and all the servants of his lord and went not down to his house. And Uriah said unto David, The ark 
and Israel and Judah abide in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields, shall I then go into mine house and eat and to drink and to lie with my wife? As thou livest and thou and as thou soul liveth, I will not do this thing. So not only would David have been free from sin and public disgrace with his lustful adulterous actions if Uriah had slept with his wife, but Uriah would not be holy when David would have sent him back to his men who, who did not receive such benefits from his hordes of the front line. So he kept the, king of da uh, the key of David. Uriah knew better. So this has to be an agreement. So he, he, the father he instructs you and Paul instructs you, do not... Let your don't burn for each other. It is better to marry than to burn, and do not withhold um, sex from your partner if you are married. First Corinthians seven it says, "Do not deprive each other of sexual relations unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time, so you can give yourselves more completely to prayer. Afterward, you should come together again, so that Satan won't be able to tempt you because of your lack of self control." So. If you if you guys aren't in agreement, don't do it. But the Sabbath day, do not pollute our Sabbath, our Father Sabbath day by having sex. And I'm gonna go through some verses that let you know that it is a big no no. We're gonna start in Isaiah fifty eight. Says if you turn away thy foot from the Sabbath by doing uh, from doing thy own pleasure on my Sabbath day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor him. Not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord. And I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now we're going to go shoot over to Isaiah 56. For, for or thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment. And do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed, which is a title, goes back to the Beatitudes, is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, and keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree, for thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbaths, and choose the things that please me, and take hold of my covenant. Even to them will I give, uh, give in mine house, and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall be not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him, and to love the name of the Lord, to, to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and taketh hold of my covenant, even them will I bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar. For mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. So this one right here, Book of Jubilees, 100% scripture taken out, should be considered Torah. Okay, let's see how, we know the sacrificial law is done, but let's see how adamant our father is about not having sex on his Sabbath day. It says, six days uh, you will do work, or you will work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. Let the man who does anything on it die. Well, there's missing text in there, but it says every man who will profane this day, who will lie with his wife, let him die. Okay, so if he feels that strongly about it, I would probably abstain from it. So the people that speak against the key of David and the ones that speak against the prophecies in Revelation, especially the book of Revelation, this is a warning to you guys because it's not good. Revelation 22 for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy in this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall, uh, shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Now that's scary. Let's go to Hosea 4. 
For my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I also will reject thee, um, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that you have forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children that should scare everyone. Let's finish it off with Romans 10. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer is for is uh, to God for Israel is they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, is going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. All right, guys, that's the end. Um, hopefully that, that explains what the key of David is. And um, if you're wanting to do the work and you want to go and do it on the Sabbath day, if you hold this key and you're diligent to his instructions, you you are in covenant, you're keeping the covenants of promise, you're not polluting yourself with swine and and and, and anything this, that the Lord says not to eat. If you're keeping the Sabbath day holy from dawn to dawn and you're doing these things and you can do his work on the Sabbath day um, and not be held um, to blame, you know. All right. Bye, guys.